<laughs> thank, thank, thank you, Deputy President. And, you know, I, I guess in, in many ways I'm, I'm sad to be speaking to this bill again. Um, we spoke about it in December 2016. And many of us in this chamber will remember that particular day. And I'm sure many of the people in the gallery will also remember those, that particular day because it was horrible. It was absolutely horrible. The vile, the, the vileness of what was said um, on that day. Um, I, uh, I won't forget it. And I was looking back at the notes that I, and the contribution that I had made on that day. And I didn't speak positively. I seemed to be just defending and addressing some of the horrible things that other people in this chamber had said and bringing them to task and showing the hypocrisy of some of the things they said. And quite often, and it doesn't come out of my mouth very often as an atheist, what would Jesus do? <laughs> Thank you, Mr Mellon. I'm not planning to convert uh, today, but I did consider what would Jesus do? And Jesus would have walked, as Ms Garrett so nice, so beautifully said, Jesus would have walked with us and Jesus would have voted with us, I believe. I, again, will be supporting this legislation because it's the right thing to do. And as Mr Jennings said, it is very, very simple. This is the right thing to do. This is, this is about people. This is about our community. This is about our sons. This is about our children. This is about our friends. This is about our loved ones. And, you know, it's, some, it's not often that actually we do debate a bill that is so personal and so important to individuals. Um, but, this, but this is one of them. And this is... And, and I, I, I have had no difficulty with this legislation. It is very simple that you are who you are. And I am not here to tell anyone other, and nor should our governments, and nor should our birth certificates. Our birth certificates should be a description of who we are. And that is what this piece of legislation will do. Um, Ms Shing, so eloquently spoke and raised some of the, the, the startling and most horrific statistics that we know about what happens to our trans and gender diverse um, friends and family. Uh, and this bill, I hope, will some way go to alleviate some of that. We're not gonna solve the discrimination, solve the vilification that we sometimes see. We're probably not gonna be able to solve the Australian newspaper. Um, <laughs> I would hope, like I did, that occasionally the Australian newspaper might actually speak to an expert rather than the Deputy President of Fred Niles Christian Democratic Party, who appears to be the expert on all things trans, even though in the articles in that paper he acknowledges he, that he, as far as he knows, has never met a trans person, uh, nor has ever looked at any research around trans or gender diversity. I, I, did, I spoke to the organisations, many of the organisations, or many of the, some of the people who are opposed to this legislation, and I spoke to them uh, genuinely. I genuinely did want to understand their fear about allowing another person to be who they are. And I, and I listened. And, you know, some of it was rubbish. But much of it, I, you know, I, I respect and, it was, and I understand that it was, it was heartfelt. I don't think it was correct because I actually spoke to the experts and that was our trans and gender diverse friends and family. 
Those are the experts on this bill. This is who this bill is for. This is, the bill is for their families. Um, I loved um, or Judy Garland, always be a first-rate version of yourself instead of a second-rate version of somebody else. How beautiful, how beautiful is that? Um, this bill is about catching up with where our community is. This bill is about love. This bill is about doing the right thing for standing up for some of our community who have had so much struggle and have had to be so bloody brave to stand up for themselves, to fight for us to be here today. And I commend this bill to the House. Yeah.